This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you tap that like button, tap that subscribe button, and ring that bell at the top. I hope you guys are all having a great day and be thankful for what you have. If you have your health right now, be very thankful for that. Um, be thankful for things and please do not uh, freak out, okay? Don't freak out because uh, we'll talk about that after on the end of the video, okay? Because I think some people are losing it out here. Uh, all right, so first we're going to talk about Meg The Stallion and 1501 Entertainment. Um, she speaks out. She said, I never really knew what kind of deal I was in throughout the whole time I was associated with 51. I never received any statements of my earnings. They haven't done right by me. It was like signing with... Now, this might not be a quote from her. They're not very... This might be a quote from one of the other artists because a lot of other artists chimed in on this that were signed to 1501. They said it was like doing a deal with the most evil person in the world. Uh, he didn't give me anything. A lot of artists are speaking out against Carl Crawford now, but I'll give two perspectives on this because um, I've been on the artist side for, with the artist and I've seen the label side. I've seen both sides, you know, and there's always two different ways to look at it. And artists always tell, usually tell a different story, especially if they're not business savvy and they're just an artist. And Meg The Stallion is just an artist at this point. She doesn't have enough experience to really gauge, go through, like to navigate through this industry. You know, uh, she has T fair. She has a team of people that help her do that for right now, but trust me, she will learn the business and she will navigate her way through the uh, business. But, uh, you got to go through a lot of learning lessons. So anyways, she's, she's taken Carl Crawford to court. Um, there's other rappers, uh, Hardy Boy Pig says he was the first artist to sign 1501. He says, um, T. Ferris convinced him to sign shortly after signing. Uh, he got locked up for three years. Now, if you just signed an artist and then he messes up and gets locked up for three years, do you think you're going to support him? You just gave him a little bit of money, probably not a lot, a few thousand dollars, you know, gave him a budget. Maybe he spent some of that, right? So maybe you're out 15, 20 grand, right? Um, cause you gave him 20 grand to get right, you know, get clothes, this, they, you know, they, when you get that money, you got to spend it on yourself, you know, getting to get your look right too, you know? So he said, they left me for, they just left me alone the whole time I was in jail. Of course they did. What, what are you going to do? Record in there? Like, it's not like your brothers all of a sudden, cause you get signed to a label. It's business. People fail to realize that it's business when you sign to a record label. Then he complains about the same stuff's happening through Me uh, with Megan that I went through. Uh, he remembers he was really on some bully stuff, Carl Crawford. He didn't give me anything. Well, why? See, this is what I don't get. Like, Meg the Stallion definitely deserves. The Hardy Boy didn't sell anything. <laughs> Never even heard of this guy. Meg the Stallion has sales under her belt, so she deserves an accounting. You know, every quarter she should get an accounting. Honestly. And, you, and you're legally, you have a legal right to do that, especially when you're in a partnership with somebody. Um, he said at Longstand, then there's another rapper named Harold Dula. I don't remember his name. He had a label. He, was, he said, it, this is the guy that said it was signing like the most evil person ever. He said um, he had a longstanding relationship with T. Ferris. That's the guy, the business partner called Crawford. That's the guy who is trying to get Meg the Stallion. He sees Meg the Stallion's like a diamond in the rough right now. And he's trying to get her over to Rock Nation straight up so he can just manage her over there. Um, Ferris brought Hadula to a nice dinner with some Houston DJs, gave the rapper some money for expenses. But Crawford and Hadula's relationship became strained over some personal stuff and it affected the business. He stopped promoting me. Megan went through what I was going through. As a promotion went away, the money did too. He wasn't even given an album budget, blah, blah, blah. Then he said, yeah, but that happens. But you, it would call Crawford should do the right thing and let him out of his deal, right? Like, so I agree with, there's two sides. So I'm giving you both, you know. If a rapper wants to get out of their deal and they haven't really done anything, they have no value anymore. And as long as you get back what you got, you put in, let them out their deal. Um, it says you should always have a buyout clause in any contract you do where you can pay X amount more than what they put in. Then he said, right, uh, rapper Sid 
Like it was promised a budget, $25,000, never materialized. Uh, but he doesn't blame Crawford. He thinks Mega's rapid success just overwhelmed the label. So here's another perspective. Uh, it doesn't really say anything more about this. But Meg the Stallion is, uh, she's, she, uh, now that it's public, things are going to be rougher for her. She just made things a lot worse uh, instead of handling things normally, you know, just like behind the scenes, getting through it. T. Ferris has gotten in her ear, who is called Crawford's manager, and he's probably got her to try to get out of the label situation. And if I were Kyle Crawford at this point, the business is broken and I would tell Rock Nation, why don't you just buy her out of her contract three times what I invested. Boom. Then we got Joe Budden making a joke, but he said, just checking to make sure you're good. It's getting crazy out there. The NBA suspended its games the same way I should have when I was with you. Be safe. I love you. I, I don't think this is like a time. It's nice to make jokes about stuff, but People are really getting concerned out here. I mean, the stock market already today dropped probably over 2,000 points as I'm speaking to you. It, it opened at 9.30, lost, uh, they had to halt trading, it lost so much. It's just people are reacting emotionally. Everything will come back to normal in a few weeks, but there's not enough information out there about this thing. It's almost like, I know why they, and, and just to put some context for the whole NBA thing, one player got sick and they have to quarantine the whole team. If they have to quarantine the whole team, they have to suspend the season because it's not fair. Plus, they can't have them playing against other teams and getting other people sick and spreading it. So they suspended the season until they figure out everything, you know? Um, and that's how it'll work. You know, the, the, the NBA season will go back in about a month or two once they figure this thing out. Every We just don't want... Like, this is a... This, this this thing is, um, it's easily spread. With the flu, it's like you just got to like, you know, you got to cough or sneeze on somebody. You can get this just by talking to somebody. So that's what really has the, the CDC and everybody in a panic. So just to put things in perspective, you know, uh, they, they have to figure it out before it goes into play. So then we got uh, Rob Kardashian gets a big win of 45 grand from... Um, one of Black China's friends. He was awarded this in court. So uh, we'll get more context on this on the next story. Um, I just want to talk to you guys real quick. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get into this story. That's a whole another five minutes. I'm not going to drag this out. Um, so we got, just be thankful for what you have today, guys. Keep bad energy away from you. Um, make sure you wash your hands for at least, you know, every time. Don't touch your face. You know, normal stuff like that. Uh, be be safe. Um don't freak, don't go crazy, you know? Like, you know, there's no harm in buying some, you know, stuff for supplies, some small stuff, you know? Make sure you sanitize your hands and everything just so you don't spread it or get it, you know? Um, don't spread it or get it. That's <laughs> But don't freak out. People are freaking out because the social media hypes it up and the news is sensationalizing it. They're interviewing people with this and that and they're, they're really making it, really big you know so uh everyone has to react to it businesses and everything yes this is serious i'm not saying it's not serious it's worse than the flu because it spreads faster and it takes longer to get over it i'm not even sure if i had it or not already because i got really sick in january and i came in contact with somebody that went overseas but i was down for the count for like three or four weeks you know i had to go to the um the clinic and get like they put put you on steroids and all this other stuff and I, I got over it but I might have had it already I don't know they say a lot of people had it and they don't even know it you know because like it was already existing in China and other places people thought they just had the flu but you'll get through it guys as long as you're not over 80 and you're not already compromised if you're already compromised like you have sickle cell or something like that um be extra careful okay Maybe stay inside and just wait it out. I don't know. I'm not going to recommend that, but a lot of companies are recommending you if you don't have to go outside. Just chill out for a minute and let it all blow over. Two or three weeks, um, I bet you things will ease up. Four weeks, we won't really be talking about it anymore. I'd say six weeks, don't, won't talk about it anymore. But for, of course, for the next two weeks, it's going to feel like the world is ending. <laughs> It's going to feel like that. So don't worry about it. 
just stay calm. The stock market will come back. Everything will come back. People just are don't know what to make of anything now. And they, don't forget, the stock market trades off of futures. So if they feel like people are canceling things and everything, money's not going to be made. Companies are going to lose money. If companies lose money, you don't have faith in that company anymore and you divest. You know, So that's what's happening right now. And, and there's a big oil thing going on over in Europe. There's a lot of different little things going on that's making the stock market fall, but it will come back, okay? And, you know, a lot of people are lining up at Costco, and for some reason they buy toilet tissue first before they buy, you know, rice or something. I don't know. People we were more concerned about going to the bathroom, I guess. But, uh, you know, just be, be calm, okay? You're going to get through this uh, you know, a couple weeks. You'll be good, man. And, you know, you do have tap water. Don't forget. <laughs> You do have water in your house, okay? Uh, and you just need some food, you know? Like get some soup or something. Get some ramen noodles. Yeah, that's what I would get. A couple bricks of ramen noodles. That'll, that'll always tide you over and some vitamins. <laughs> All right, guys. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And I will check you guys in the next one. Peace.